Happy May. Guys, this is serious. For the first time in Shara Reed's history, I'm refilming a video. I'm refilming a whole set of videos because yesterday I turned my camera on um, and I just didn't have it in me to record individual book videos about the books that I read in April. And um, so I just did one big wrap up thing like I used to. And when I was editing it, firstly, it was like 25 minutes long and I definitely had had enough content um, about each of the books to make individual videos. And I was also so aware of like how, because I didn't write very thorough notes and it was just rambling, how it could have been structured better. And um, I decided, I decided I had to refilm. I had to like get the gusto up to turn the camera on again and film them all separately and then refilm a bloody wrap up video. So I've said all of this crap before um, and I'm I'm sorry for that intro. Hello, welcome to Char Reads. We now have non-rainbow shelves um, and I also have new glasses, which look pretty nice. So yeah, compliments on them down in the comments, thanks. Uh, so what happened this month, the month of April, the month that I'm <laughs> definitely recording this video in, <laughs> how dare you? Um, I read six books, three of them were audiobooks. Um, and then I also read two other books. I've like almost finished two other books, but that doesn't count for April. So we're not including them here. The first book I read on my wonderful balcony uh, was Convenience Store Woman by uh, Sayaka Murata. Um, seen a lot of chat about this on, on uh, Goodreads and on Booktube. Um, and it was just as kind of like slightly odd as everyone has been saying. Um, it is about a woman who is 36 years old and she's been working in the same shop for 18 years. So pardon me, her whole life, that's not right, half of her life, what's wrong with me? Half of her life she spent working in this shop um, to the dismay of her friends and family. And uh, and yeah, that's kind of, that's like where it starts. Um, strange, very depressing the more you think about it. The more you think about it, the sadder it gets. So don't think about it too much, is that the solution? <laughs> The next book I read, because I wanted to just like continue reading slightly lighter things. I guess Community Storm isn't that light, but I was like, it's sunny, it's basically summer, I'm locked inside. Um, so I read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Uh, this is a kind of like chill space opera of just like people having a good time together. Um, it's the first in a series of standalone novels based in the same universe and it was fun and cute. I made a video about it that you can watch below. Also made a video about Convenience Store Woman, if I wasn't clear about that. The third book I read, I listened to, which is A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. Um, this came out in 2013. It is a very broad history of science, basically, like chemistry, physics, we've got some astronomy in there, got some paleontology, um, and it kind of goes through time, uh, through a lot of kind of important scientific discoveries. Um, this was great. I just had it on kind of like whenever I felt like listening to an audiobook, I just listened to a bit. And it was all stuff that I already like knew or at, le at least had been taught in school. Um, so it wasn't like fresh knowledge to me, but it's just nice to know more. And the way he kind of interweaves all of these um, historic events and, and the people that were, were involved in making these discoveries is just kind of joyous and it was really nice. Bill Bryson wrote it because he didn't feel like he knew enough about science. Um, and I think that's why one should read it, is just becoming more kind of broadly aware of um, science. One thing I think is really interesting though, is that this came out in 2003 and that's 17 years ago now. That's a significant chunk of time. And there have been lots of scientific advancements in that time. There hasn't been a revised edition released of A Short History of Nearly Everything, um, but some things have just changed. Like now we know the universe is expanding at an ever increasing rate and we thought before that it was going to stop eventually. Um, like now the Higgs boson has been proven to be real. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's strange to think about um, it as kind of like a time capsule of scientific knowledge. And also like, I don't want to get too into pedagogy, but it's like a time capsule of what one thought was important science learning at that point in time. And I don't think it's far off now, maybe far off what was taught 40 years ago. But I think it's really interesting that um, science curricula are 
just what we've decided is the most important thing for the broadest amount of people to know. And, you know, if, if you want to know this thing, you have to like do a PhD in microbiology. And we've decided that that's just not an important thing for everyone to know. But we've decided like that the, the structure of atoms is an important thing for everyone to know. So having this as like a fairly thorough, um, but not too long kind of just chunk of what we thought was important is really interesting because it's not like a national government has decided like uh, some board of examiners has decided what's important it's what it's it's almost like what publishing thought was important science knowledge um which yeah that's fascinating the next book i also listened to it's called dear life by rachel clark um it also came out this year <laughs> i say also it also came out this year as did another book that I'm going to talk about in a minute but I've just made a video about that one so it's in my brain. Rachel Clark was a journalist but in her late 20s she retrained as a doctor and she was very kind of prominent in the media um, during a lot of the debates about uh, junior doctors trying to um, get better rights. So a couple years ago she wrote a book about being a junior doctor um, and now she's written this book Dear Life about being a doctor in the realm of palliative care. So she's a palliative care doctor in a hospice so she deals with end of life care. But Charlotte you have a favourite end of life care book. I do! It's With the End of Mind by Catherine Mannix. Um, so when I was listening to, to Dear Life I kept having echoes of, of this book. Catherine Mannix is a palliative care nurse and has worked for decades in, in hospices dealing with end of life care. And Rachel Clark has only been a doctor in hospices for a couple years, I think. Um, so uh, the, the difference there was interesting. I found uh, Dear Life was a lot more of kind of a memoir. Um, I think it, it had these these aspects of autobiography, specifically around her dad and her, and her, her dad's death, uh, which were, were really moving. Um, I thought they were brilliant. Uh, but I think like this book was more kind of a, from the position of someone that is dying. It was more about like the empathy of the person. And I think Dear Life, while it definitely was very empathetic and had a lot of those same elements, it was slightly more from the position of the doctor instead of the position of the patient. I did think it was really good though, and I would definitely recommend it. The next book I read, Sharp Left Turn, um, is Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. I had a lot of feelings about this, mostly negative. Um, I did a full video about it, which I'll obviously link below. Um, this was, uh, most of the negative feelings were about like the main character just being a massive fuckboy and just like them being undertones of incest. Um, neither of my favourite subjects really. And uh, yeah, didn't, didn't enjoy it. Um, so we'll just, we'll leave that here. And the final book I have to talk about is A Bit of a Stretch by Chris Atkins. This is the one that also came out this year. This was Chris Atkins' memoir around serving time in Wandsworth Prison um, for fraud. And I made a proper video about this as well, which I don't, I'm not sure I've ever done for an audiobook, um, but it just like made me think a lot. I didn't, I can't say I loved it. I felt quite mixed about the book because as I go into in the video, there's a strange tension between it being like quite light-hearted and humorous and like cynical about about this this space he's in, and then also the kind of like darker side of how malfunctioning the prison system is and how he kind of like plays, like does all of the right things to take advantage of his position in the prison system and how uh, like the vast majority of, of inmates cannot like do prison the way he did. Um, so it's a bit of a strange one and I didn't expect it to be as thought-provoking as it was but it was really interesting. So um, you know have a listen to that video if you want to know more. I'm gonna stand on one foot for the rest of this just uh, you can't see my knee but my knee is in the air. Um, I'm sad that I can't release the video I did yesterday because the lighting is so much better, uh, my hair looked a lot better and I just I look better in general but I think you're getting more bang for your buck with it this way. Um, so what am I doing? All right, this, I think when you start standing on one foot, it's time to turn the video off. I hope you had a good April. I'm getting really confused at the months now. I mean, is it June? Like, no idea. Um, and, oh God, I, just, I give up. Um, I will see you in the next one. Ta-ta.